Life Audio. Welcome to the Bible Out of Context, our current series for the Bible Never Said That podcast, where instead of popular sayings that conflict with Orthodox theology, our usual modus operandi, we are looking at Bible verses that people use outside of the context they were intended for. The verse we are taking a closer look at today is most often heard at church leadership events, church planting conferences, or from your local vision board enthusiast. Proverbs 29, 18 is most often used out of context when people quote it exclusively from the King James Version of the Bible, which says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. It's clear to you that de-icing the wings will not be done in a jiffy. You look for phone outlets but see none, only photos of phone outlets. A voice announces your gate is now 39C, 12B, 9A. It's like musical chairs if musical chairs made you sob in the pet relief area. A child picking his nose stares. His parents have abandoned him. The airport will raise him now. Don't let flight delays ruin your vacation. Go on a real vacation. GoRVing.com. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business, especially in today's economy. But over 31,000 businesses do know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of financials, planning, budgeting, and inventory so you can manage risk and improve margins. Everything you need all in one place. See why NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash go. netsuite.com slash go. Most of the time, only half of this verse is used. The part that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. You should be able to see how this verse will be a great, but faulty, lead-in to casting a vision for a church, an upcoming year, or an event. But the problem is that when we look at the original translation, it doesn't quite play out as our enthusiastic but erroneous vision casters would hope. The NIV says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. CSB says, without revelation, people run wild, but one who follows divine instruction will be happy. And the ESV says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. Even the New King James Version uses the word revelation. It says, where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. Eric J. Bargerhuff explains that language changes and that in the time when the KJV was written, people would have known that vision meant revelation. Bargerhuff continues by saying, The misuse of Proverbs 29.18 arises when we randomly take one of the modern-day uses of the word vision, like having a business plan, and illegitimately import that idea back into the biblical text in a way that is completely foreign to the author's original intent. It is important to offer a level of grace in situations like this because people don't always take verses out of context on purpose, which is why we gently correct inaccuracies. There is a difference between the person who makes a mistake and the schemer seeking to manipulate. The second half of this verse is something we also should look at because most of the time, people just leave it off. Jim Challies points out that the second half of this verse about the law is just often forgotten. He teaches that the word but contrasts something from the first clause and the second. Obviously, what is being contrasted is those who cast off restraint when there is no revelation from God with those who keep the law regardless. This verse warns against turning from the revelations of God and promises blessing to those who honor him. It is possible that a brief, careless reading of one translation of the Bible 
could lead to confusion as to this verse's meaning. But for anyone who rightly handles the Word of God, paying attention to the sense of the text and to the meaning of the specific words used, the meaning of this verse is obvious. This verse says nothing of the importance of having a church that is led by vision or a visionary. Ironically, this verse should underscore the importance of honoring God's revelation and warn those who would water it down by sloppy or deliberate misuse. The misapplication of this verse gives us important things to consider, including the different types of revelation or vision that God has given his people. We're going to just take some time to explore that so we can better understand what we're looking at. God is mighty and mysterious, but he has not left us without insight into his character. He predominantly uses three types of revelation, general, special, and applied to make his greatness and will known to humanity. He does not conceal what we need to follow him, but wants us to know and trust him. With all his heart, we need him to reveal himself as we could never find him without his reaching towards us first. So let's break them down. General revelation is just like it sounds. It is revelation given to everyone. Romans 1, 18 through 20 discusses creation as a form of general revelation. It says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made so they are without excuse. Kevin DeYoung encourages us to notice the difference between general and special revelation. The former gives us a sense of God's power and divine nature so that we are left without excuse. The latter, special revelation, reveals God more openly so that we might be saved. In terms common to humanity, General revelation appears to us as natural. Examples are creation, as where special revelation is supernatural. Examples like dreams, like Jacob experienced in Genesis 28, 12, which says, And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Also. Visions. I think the example from 2 Corinthians 12, 1 through 7 is particularly interesting. Paul has gone through many of the things that have shaped him into an apostle. And then he says to the Corinthians, I must go on boasting. Though there is nothing to be gained by it, I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up into the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Whoa, there is a lot there. But remember, that was our example for visions. And now we're moving on to theophanies is another example of special revelation. These are the times where God appears to his people as the angel of the Lord, a burning bush, pillar of cloud, or a pillar of fire, and most relevant to all of us, divinely inspired written word, also known as the Bible, which we know is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, 
and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. As 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 16-17 teaches. Now let's move on to applied revelation. Now, I will let you know, some people only talk about general and special revelation, and applied revelation is kind of worked into special revelation, but there are also others who divide it into these three things. So know that we're going to cover applied revelation so that you have an understanding of it, and I think you will enjoy it. So finally, (laughs) applied revelation is the work of the Holy Spirit to enable an individual to respond, submit, and comprehend the love and power of the God shown in general revelation, whose character and will are further revealed by special revelation. Scripture speaks of this in 1 Corinthians 2, 10, and 11. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. God must move in an individual for the impact of general and special revelation to be applied to life. So the types of revelation are important to understand. What we God's people need. But the absence of this is what leads to people running wild, casting off restraint, and ultimately perishing. We need God's revelation of Himself and His grace if we are to find our happiness and soul satisfaction in obedience to His Word. Let's look at a scriptural narrative in which we see all three of these types of revelation at work. In Acts 14, we see special revelation, general revelation, and applied revelation unfold in Listeria. God was revealing himself through the miracles, special revelation, that Paul and Barnabas were performing in Jesus' name. But when the people began to believe the missionaries to be gods, Paul rebuked them and pointed them at general revelation through the work of applied revelation in his own life. So, starting at verse 8. Now, at Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. And when the crowds saw What Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying, saying in like onion, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priests of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. Unfortunately, many of Paul's hearers did not receive applied revelation, and some sought to stone him. So he moved on to Derby, where many became disciples due to applied revelation given by the Holy Spirit. Aside from the man who was healed, the audience in Lystra never got to a place of satisfaction because they wanted to continue worshiping their own gods. But those in Derby who received the truth of God's revelation and embraced Jesus as the fullest revelation of God himself were able to then walk in obedience 
as they found their soul's satisfaction in Christ alone. We need all these types of revelation for life, salvation and satisfaction in Christ. And we must also rejoice in the fact that so much revelation has been given to us through the Word of God. Remember, where there is no prophetic vision or revelation, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. What joy we should have in keeping the law that has been revealed to us. Listening to and watching for God are ways that we can stand firm against the ways our flesh may want to lead us. We've all had thoughts and impulses that feel intrusive and alarming, but when we cast off the restraint that God strengthens us with and through revelation, we are more likely to act on this destructive behavior. This verse is not about setting a vision for the year or convincing people to jump on board for a new church program, but it's about tuning in to God's will for His people and following His ways. Let's pray. Oh God, how we need your leading and direction in our lives. Show us what it means to listen and follow you. Thank you that so much of your will is in the Bible for us to apply to our everyday lives. Enable us to resist temptation and stand for what is holy. We want your wisdom to guide our lives and keep us from folly. Help us to find the time in our busy days to sit with your given revelation. Show us who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My book recommendation this week is for those of you who love this type of discussion about context. I recently stumbled upon it, and I think you would love it. It is Eric J. Bargerhuff's The Most Misused Verses in the Bible. So right in line with what we teach here. You'll even find some verses we haven't covered here in the podcast. The verses, books, and other articles referred to today can be found in the show notes at lifeaudio.com slash podcast or on iTunes. And thank you to those who have rated and reviewed this podcast. It is helping others to find us. And if you haven't reviewed, we love to hear what you think. As always, until next time, may you seek the abundant life Jesus died to give and live in the truth that sets people free. The Bible Never Said That is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com.